If you own a Toyota, it doesn't mean it was built in Japan. If you have a Mercedes-Benz, it doesn't mean it was made in Deutschland either. In fact, either of those cars could have been made in America. Today, we're looking at why Toyotas that are built in Japan and Mercedes that are made in Germany are actually better than the ones assembled in the U.S. in more ways than one. Here's why. Let's start with Toyota. Currently, there are five Toyota models that are made in Japan and then shipped to the U.S. The Prius, Mirai, Land Cruiser 4 Runner, and the 86. And did you know that there are other countries that make and build Toyotas and also ship them to the U.S.? Like the Toyota Yaris. Surprisingly enough, the Yaris is built out in France. Or the Toyota CHR, would you guess Turkey? Toyota also has other overseas plants that build out their cars. This includes the U.S. plus other countries, including Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, Germany, England, Italy, China, Korea, and a few others. So, where was your Toyota built? Chances are it was indeed made here in the U.S. If you own a Sienna Sequoia, Highlander, RAV4 Hybrid, Camry, Avalon, Tacoma, Tundra, or Corolla. But if you want to know for sure, it's quite simple. Just check the vehicle identification number, also known as the VIN number. The first character of your VIN tells you the country where your car was manufactured and assembled. If your VIN starts with a letter, that means your vehicle was manufactured outside of North and South America. If you see the letter J, this means it was assembled in Japan. K stands for Korea. L is for China, S is for the UK, W is for Germany, and Z is for Italy. But if your VIN starts with a number, that means it was manufactured outside of Japan. If your car was assembled in the US, then the first character of your car's VIN will show either the numbers 1, 4, or 5. If you see the number 2, your car was made in Canada. 3 means Mexico, 6 is Australia, 7 is New Zealand, and 8 or 9 means South America. You can see your car's VIN on the front driver's side window of your car. And you should be able to see it from the outside. If you can't, it's usually written on your car insurance card or documents. You can also check the title and registration logged with the Department of Motor Vehicles. Your VIN just doesn't indicate where your car comes from, but the location information alone can reveal something about the quality of your car too. For example, if you have a Toyota, best case scenario is that your VIN starts with the letter J for Japan. In 2019, some 2.3 million Toyotas were sold in the U.S. Of those, half of those Toyotas were actually made here in America. So you can see a lot of Toyotas get built here in U.S. soil. And here's the question. Why are Toyotas that are made in Japan so much better than the American counterparts? The biggest difference is the build quality. Toyotas built in Japan have much better build quality compared to the Toyotas built in the USA. A lot of it has to do with the strong Japanese work as a, and discipline. Did you know there's a Japanese philosophy that's literally called continuous improvement? It's known as Kaizen. Some call it the art of perfection. Someone once told me that in Japan, Kaizen gets taught to all children from a very young age. I haven't very if it's true or not. But one thing is certain, Toyota for sure is famous for embodying this philosophy. This plays a big part in producing a manufacturing workforce that is highly disciplined in everything they do down to the very last detail. And on top of it, the Japanese workers' dedication to continuous improvement, they're also well known for their unwavering dedication to their work. It's a mindset. And then you look at the U.S. I'm not saying that American workers aren't interested in producing high build quality. They are. But they just aren't as good at it as the Japanese are. And workers in the U.S. car manufacturing industry are also becoming less and less motivated in their jobs and their field. This isn't my opinion. The U.S. car manufacturing industry has been described as a declining field with unprofessional dead-end jobs. And there was a study done by the Fabricators and Manufacturers Association. It found that among U.S. teens, a whole 52% expressed little or no interest in a manufacturing career. Compare that to the workforce in Japan, you can see why build quality in Toyota is just so much better. But did you know that technicality-wise, Toyota parts in the U.S. and in Japan are the same on paper? But many owners believe that even small components like nuts and bolts differ in Japanese versus American-built Toyotas. Actually, there are even online forums where people claim that Japanese-made parts are more solid. But now, let's talk about Mercedes-Benz. Everyone knows that Mercedes-Benz is one of the top luxury car brands in the world. They're headquartered in Stuttgart, Germany. But they don't manufacture all cars exclusively in Germany. In fact, Mercedes has manufacturing facilities in 22 different countries. I'm talking about manufacturing plants in Austria, Argentina, France, Brazil, Hungary, and of course the U.S. These facilities were created because of the high demand for their vehicles and strict import restrictions in various countries. The Stuttgart plant was built all the way back in 1904. Today it's one of the largest Mercedes plants. They have some 19,000 employees. This is where 
the Mercedes transmissions, engines, and axles get made. This is also why you'll find the Mercedes-Benz research and development team. So if you're wondering where Mercedes-Benz is playing its future electric vehicle batteries, it's here at the Stuttgart facility. Did you know that Mercedes also has a large plant here in the U.S.? It's located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. It was founded in 1995 and some 3,700 people work at the facility. In fact, the Alabama plant was actually the first major Mercedes-Benz manufacturing facility outside of Germany. Today, this Alabama plant makes the Mercedes-Benz SUVs, including the GLE Class, GLE Coupe, and GLS Class. This facility is also known for making the Mercedes C-Class sedans. Recently, there's been a new addition to the Made in America Mercedes family, the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. This is Mercedes' very own camper van. Sprinters for American consumers are assembled in South Carolina. Carolina, but they get their core parts shipped in from Europe. And they've been doing that since 2006, but it wasn't always an easy process. Actually, the vice president of Mercedes-Benz Vans USA, Bernie Glasser, once said that the logistics process was a nightmare and a burden. You see, at the time, there was a 25% tariff on imports. Pretty much, the U.S. was taxing car makers that built trucks and commercial vans overseas before shipping them into the U.S. This tax was nicknamed the Chicken Tax. Actually, the original Chicken Tax was set by President Lyndon B. Johnson after France in West Germany put a tariff on American imported chicken. Anyway, Mercedes wanted to avoid the double-digit tax, so they disassembled each Sprinter before shipping it overseas from Germany. And once the parts arrived in the U.S., they would put them back together again on U.S. soil. But despite the chicken tax, the Sprinter van has been seeing annual sales growth since its debut in the U.S. in 2010. In fact, in 2010, the Sprinter outpaced the large van segment with its best-ever U.S. performance. But things changed in 2016. American car makers started to build more and more affordable vans. Take the Ford Transit, for example, and Mercedes didn't want to place last in the competition. So, in 2016, Mercedes made plans for a new $500 million addition to their commercial van factory in South Carolina, with the goal of employing 1,300 people by 2020. Construction was completed just in time. Assembling the vans in American soil meant they can avoid the chicken tax and cut costs, in addition to building more vans and delivering them faster to the American market. In 2019, Mercedes released the third-generation Sprint it offered new connectivity services and navigation software and three-liter turbocharged six-cylinder diesel engines. It was also the company's first-ever gasoline model. Later, they got a huge mark of validation when they received the call from Amazon, the e-commerce giant. Amazon placed an impressive order with Mercedes. They wanted 20,000 Sprinter vans for use as their blue delivery vehicles. Right now, Amazon is Mercedes' largest Sprinter customer in the world. In fact, Amazon is the very reason why the U.S. is the second largest market globally for the Sprinter. If you flew to Germany or Austria today, you'd see the streets filled with taxis. But it's not your usual American yellow cab. But rather, you'd see Mercedes taxis. Really? Mercedes taxis are actually rather common there. But why would anyone choose a luxury brand out of all cars to use as taxis? In these countries, drivers pay less taxes when they purchase lower-cost cars. If you're a taxi driver in Germany and you decide to go for an imported Ford Fiesta as your ride, you'd probably end up paying much more in taxes than a driver who goes for a Mercedes E-Class. That's why it's more more economically sound for you to choose a domestic Mercedes if you're a taxi driver in Europe. But that doesn't mean that all German luxury cars are used for taxis. Just don't expect to see a BMW, Audi, or Porsche taxi on your next trip to Germany or Austria anytime soon. That's because the cost of insurance and maintenance of these cars is way higher than for a Mercedes-Benz. And most people would agree that Mercedes offers more reliable cars than many other brands. There's another reason why Mercedes are popular as taxis in Germany. Driving a taxi used to be considered a luxury. The rich preferred getting chauffeured in a prestigious car. And that was the exact image Mercedes portrayed. That's another reason why drivers choose Mercedes as taxis. Today, typically, the Mercedes-Benz E-Class and S-Class are the popular models used as taxis, mainly because they offer more interior space and legroom, and they can generally easily accommodate different types of passengers and luggage. I took a Mercedes taxi to the airport in London when I was there. And it's not just German-speaking countries that use Mercedes for their taxis. Countries like Cyprus, Greek, Monaco, and Denmark do so too. Here's something many people don't know. The model number of Mercedes is higher on U.S. vehicles compared to European ones. For example, if you're in Europe and you have a Mercedes S500, well, that same car in America is called the S550. I'm talking about the exact same twin-turbo 4.7-liter V8 that makes 449 horsepower. Just a different name. And it's not just Mercedes S-Class models that change their badge numbers in the U.S. Just look at the Mercedes G-Wagon. The base level version is called the G550 in the U.S., but in Europe, it's called the G500. The V8-powered GLS is called the GLS 550 in the U.S., but in Europe, it's called, you guessed it, the GLS 500. 
So what's the logic? Currently, there's two theories. One is pretty straightforward. For Americans, bigger is usually better. And so having a 550 sounds much cooler than a plain old 500. But here's another theory. This one says that badging is actually more accurate this way. In the past, the numbers in a Mercedes model used to indicate the engine size. A C280 had a 2.8 liter engine. A 500E had a 5 liter engine. And when the 550 badge numbers started popping up in the US back in 2007, those vehicles used a 5.5 liter engine. Of course, that engine doesn't even exist anymore. Today, Mercedes are closer to the 400 liter mark, but who wants an S400 when you could get an S550? But now you tell me, do you own a Mercedes or Toyota that was built in the US? Have you noticed the difference between foreign built cars versus versus the American assembled counterparts? Please share your opinion by commenting below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support.